that journey is for you guys too, man. Because if I were here just like chopping it all off, that'd be a real bummer. Yeah, no doubt. Be a real boner. <laughs> <laughs> well, this hair gives me a boner, but <laughs> you can start pulling it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's when I stop filming. <laughs> No, that's when yeah, you grab the different cameras. Well, you had it in the casting couch earlier, yeah, so yeah, you just like, oh, right. it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's for our Patreons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>of the way the hair is gonna to, to bounce back is just like I said looking for some of these little breakaways trying to keep it within an inch two inches don't want to remove a lot of that effort that he's already put in how often do you come in for these types of like maintenance cuts Dude, this is the first time in a really long time yeah like since June when I went in and had them trim it. And honestly, it was just kind of waiting for the right barber to come along. And I'm telling you, man, it always happens by fate the way I find my barbers. Yeah. How, uh, have, like, what has your barber experience been? I've had I mean, some really, yeah, I've, the whole gambit. And now you get like a very yeah. different type of haircut. I've had the whole gambit to where you walk in, you look at all the staff and you're like, man, it's six o'clock on a Sunday. I have to get a haircut. <laughs> I guess I'm getting the, the bowl cut today. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
all the way to, you know, really, really nice professional barbers, you know, much like this. You hear that, y'all? Nice professional barber. Yeah, this is a legit <laughs> spot. If you're new to the game, like, this is a legit barber shop. Yeah, this is, um, I think what we've really strived to do is to find um, that, that sweet spot of, you know, doing good short haircuts that men usually rock and then being able to do this kind of stuff as well. And being and aware of like, yeah. hey man, not everything has to be a fade, not everything has to be, and just being uh, cognizant of how that journey is for you guys too, man, because if I were here just like chopping it all off, that'd be a real bummer. Yeah, no doubt. Be a real boner? Well, you just have a a boner, but... <laughs> you can start pulling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is a. Uh, that's when I stopped filming. <laughs> no, that's when you grabbed the different Ooh, cameras. Cause, cause you oh, yeah. the, well, you had them in the casting couch earlier, yeah, so yeah, you just like, right. oh, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a uh, that's for our Patreons. Yeah. <laughs> Fans <laughs> only. <laughs> but yeah, just like you said, that another thing too is like there's that stereotype like barber shop, you know, straight razor fades so yep. with long hair it's where do you go where do you go do you, you and I was walking that line I was like do I go to a salon and like let them cut it or because then you're sacrificing the other end like because then you're probably going to be in a spot where they're not very comfortable or familiar with doing a beard yeah. so I think uh, I'm, I'm really proud that the industry is starting to ad adapt and evolve and accept the fact that hey man like men are wearing longer hair women are wearing mm -hmm. shorter hair uh, clippers aren't a bad tool, shears aren't a bad tool, like we, we're starting to learn how to manipulate all those tools and that's just for a better experience and product for, like I said, the, the, the modern man, the modern woman who wants to rock different styles as opposed to just kind of like the status quo, the classic look, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really proud of uh, the evolution of our industry. So just getting his hair out of the way, I want to clean up some of this, this neckline. So he wears it up all the times that I've seen him on the streets. Uh, he has been rocking his hair pulled back. So a lot of this makes it look a little unkept. And you can see, like this is this is not gonna be rolling. Like, oh, this is this is a different part of the hairline. This is uh, neck beard, as I call it. So this is not gonna grow into the rest of the hair. We can go ahead and confidently take it off. Um, one, one of the things I try to consider is, cool, I can see where his hairline is really dense, where this is starting to grow down, but at the same time, I don't want to take it right up to that line. I want to, I want to be considerate of his, of his hairline, so we'll, uh, I'm going to cut it down and then just kind of soften up the edges so it's not like a really sharp edge and at the same time not a fade and at the same time not long. So <laughs> try, to, try to do the math on all that. Just by looking at his his overall kind of look and edges, I don't want to give him a really aggressive um, taper in the back. At the same time, I don't want it to be so soft that it's almost feminine. I want to have a distinguished line, but just not as like I said, aggressive. Because I want this to also like grow out nice and soft. Because it's probably going to be a little while before I see him again, so I want to make sure that it just has a little direction, but not necessarily com completely changing his style. Well, this is very much a cleanup as opposed to a really aggressive taper. You don't do any of this maintenance at home. I do. You do? Mm hmm But the, the sideburns and stuff, it got to the point where it, it got a little bit out of my reach. So I was like, I'll just leave it alone and let it grow out. And then at a certain point, you know, I'll let somebody carve it up, carve my face out of it. So one of the things that a lot of guys uh, struggle with is that they try to put they put their hair behind their ear. Mm -hmm. But just like with the way we taper out beards and things like that, this is from this little corner of the ear down. This is sideburn. Yeah. And um, you, you can see that I've already pulled all as much as of his hair back as possible and this is just naturally grew out just like his neckline so I'm going to treat it as such instead of going way up into his uh, into his hairline like a like an undercut um, we're just going to 
soften up these edges and make it a sideboard again because uh, yeah this is on both sides it just naturally fell out um, and he has enough to pull back behind his ear and this should be out of the out of the question and that's what I normally do is pull the comb uh, with the hair over the ear and then anything that's kind of that corner you talk to goes away like all that stuff right there are there any areas of concern or things that you've run into when you're trimming your own stuff? Or no, is there no. a shape that you that you prefer that you're trying to to get? You see my t-shirts. <laughs> I normally keep the sides, like the the chop parts, a little bit uh, shorter, a little bit more pointed. Okay. Yeah, when you walked in, I saw that you had a nice squared bottom. Mm -hmm. um, is that the shape that you kind of like enjoy, or is that just what happens when you trim it? Yeah, that's just what happens naturally. Is there like a more of a spade, or a little bit more round, pointed? Yeah, a little like um, kind of like mix between a, a spade and the point. Kind of mimicking your face essentially, because I see yeah. like because I'm looking at your cheeks and then the ways that these little uh, grooves. I would like to maybe mimic that yep. a lot more. As far as length, same thing. As I come this out, you get all these little weak spots broken off and in the clear. I see the density right about it. You have hair that's probably four inches longer than where that real thickness really starts to happen. I think we'll bring it up there. I don't know, hopefully that's long enough for all my haters who say I don't trim beards. They always say like, oh, Bob just barely touches the beard. Yeah, I right. like, bro, I don't want to ruin a nice fucking beard by <laughs> chopping it all off. So what I'd like to do now is just address some of these edges, the mustache, the real obvious easy stuff. I'm gonna lay you back, get this all nice and softened up, a nice little punch of uh, softener, and then we'll, we'll dr blow dry it out so we can get the full effect and then do another like really um, aggressive trim on it. Right now I think we just got it down to the bare essentials, the foundation, and then we can start getting a little bit more, finessing it a little bit more. As far as the mustache goes, you uh, how do you? It's it's a, little, it's a different color. Dude, it's a, like it's so a different. Yeah. What is uh? What do you like to do with that bad boy? It's just along for the ride. <laughs> so, um, do you prefer it to be longer like that, uh, or do you is it just like a maintenance thing, or do you want to go for a little bit more tailoring, a little, a little, a little shorter? We can definitely trim it up. All right. It was a thing that. Man, Caleb told me that Sam Elliott grew a better mustache than me, and I was like, oh yeah, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a spite mustache. <laughs> yeah. <A> little turd. <laughs> yeah, Caleb, you, you little turd. <laughs> He's a funny kid, man. Like I said, we, 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 we liked him as soon as he started like giving it back to us, man. <laughs> Thank you. 
Or you have to 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 have to
uh, the smoker needed some work. It had rotisserie motors in it for some reason. I was like, you don't, you know, do rotisserie on an offset smoker. So I pulled those out and I uh, made some racks, welded those together, and then I got them hung in the smoker and started smoking peppers. We had some that were about to go bad, and I was like, oh, I'll just smoke them. We can make our own pepper powder, you know? And we made the powders, and then I made a batch where I put those smoked powders in the sauce, and it was like a game changer. It was so freaking good. Uh, you know, separated from corporate, and it was one of those things, like, am I really gonna go back to work for somebody else, or? Can I put these hours in on myself and invest in myself? And man, that was it. We launched in 2020, July of 2020, and it's been a roller coaster since. So how many, how many, uh, like how many different flavors are you running into? Like right now, what are you rocking? We have 10 recipes of buffalo sauce and three recipes of ketchup. And then those vary. The, the bulk of them have habanero and chipotle in it. Uh, but the hotter ones have M16, which is 16 strains of the world's hottest. So the Reaper, <laughs> the Ghost, the Scorpion, yeah. and then all of their hybrids. So really, really hot, really good. Now, riddle me this, like, when you get your hands on these, these uh, different, like, chili pepper combinations, is that something that you fuse together, or is like somebody already doing the mad science on this and then you're just come combining so, it. Yeah, I get the, uh, are you talking about like the peppers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are actually grown for me exclusively by a Marine that I served with my first duty station. Nice. So we used to hang out and jam. You know, he played drums, I played guitar. And then, you know, stay in each other's lives. And then 10 years later, he's like, oh, I'm into growing, I'm into hydro. Uh, I'd love to grow peppers for you. And I'm like, dude, do it. So he started doing that for us. And man, the peppers that dude grows for us are so hot. So hot. But it's just really cool to, to make that, you know, come full circle. From serving together now to having a business relationship is, is really cool. What is, uh, like when you are testing some of these peppers out, is it just into the recipe or are you like chomping on some of that stuff? Got to. <laughs> Got to. Yeah, my wife will help me too. And we'll Ooh. bite into one. If you go for a ride. You go for a ride. What is, uh, from your friend's batches, like what are some of the like, holy shit peppers? Like, oh, I mean all of them. Yeah. I, all of them. So what is like, what makes, uh, you know, I know that some peppers just have heat, some peppers have some flavor. Like, what is the, the kind of the sweet spot that you consider when you're... Yeah, so habanero, that does it for me, like personally. Uh, but there are other people who like those crazy, crazy hot ones. And I do every now and then, but it's not... I'm not eating with every single uh, meal. I, do, I put hot sauce on almost everything, but... I kind of reserve those hotter ones for... Special occasions, <laughs> but yeah, it's really the flavor that I'm going for. Like each of them have their own characteristics. Like a ghost pepper tastes vastly different than like a scorpion. Yeah, I guess you would have to try them like back to back to see like yeah. what those actual. Because yeah, if you just get one by itself, it's like holy shit, this sucks, and then you just you're done. But if they, uh, if you're just trying, to... yeah. So you do that? Do you like go through a few of them in the same kind of day or something? Take notes. How are you liking this overall shape? So kind of brought down these, these mm -hmm. sides, right? You can see in the in the on the white background, right? Yeah, but it's still pretty heavy on these on these cheek lines, so it's still mm -hmm. a proper beard. Um, you can style it to where it has a little bit more of a, of a rounder, pointier shape. Mm -hmm. But we can also accentuate that and just make it to be... Yeah, we can bring those the sides up a little bit. Okay, cool. But yeah, it's looking good. But the, I mean, the hot sauces were cool. I've been doing those the longest, but the ketchups, man. That's when it like the game was changed. I'm gonna have you, just so I can get that last little bulk underneath. Yeah, for sure. Put your head back from me, bro. 
I just appreciate that I can come to these events and, you know, I know he's going to be a respectful boy when he comes in here. Uh, he's a no, he's a great kid and that uh, says a lot about you and your lady and just kind of his surroundings, but that's a, you know, that's what we want to do here as well is be that that third spot as Eric Bandholds has been talking about. Like that place where people can come to be a part of like a community, you know, share some ideas, whether they're, they're similar or differing, but feel safe that they can at least have a conversation, be themselves, maybe get schooled in a couple of things and just grow yeah. together. Um, you know, so when, when he comes into the shop and we treat him like, you know, just like one of us, you know, I, I love that you feel confident enough to just like let him hang out in here. And he feels confident enough as a kiddo, because how old is Caleb? 13. Yeah, that's a perfect age to catch this kid. He, he walks in, he, he gets, feels right at home. He gets really excited too, and he knows that we're coming down here. <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe one of these I get to cut his hair. We said that he grew up his hair long too, right? How'd that go? Not great. He just wasn't taking care of it. He'd throw it back in a headband and just leave it there. Oh man, just getting the kid to take a proper bath, like that's that's a science, man, for sure. So I told him, I was like, you when you earn your long hair, you can grow it out. But until then, man, if you... You get what you can maintain. And he's playing football now too, so he likes the shorter hair. He'll probably grow out in high school. Is he gonna join the military? I hope not. Good. <laughs> I don't regret it, I loved it. I made the man today, you know, but how everything is is in this country and you know I got out for a reason I talked to my buddies and they justify my reason every time we have a conversation so no regrets and that's God great, bless them for yeah them. man that's uh that's what you know brothers are having brothers is about brothers and sisters that can like I said check you when you need it but at the same time support even if it's a tough call no doubt Yeah, he wouldn't be like disowned or anything, but I would appreciate it if we did something else. <laughs> yeah, my brother-in-law's a Marine, and uh, I was very close to, to going down that route. And he said, hey man, don't. <laughs> like if you like I went into it like country, for the Marine Corps, and any time I spend in after that is going to be for me and the Marines. And it just, things shifted to the point where my morals and values didn't line up with the institutions. And, you know, when I joined to the, the peak of combat operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, when that stopped being the priority, like, that was big for me. I was, you know, I mean, well, yeah, man, when you're the ones that are knocking down the doors and seeing how for, for what it really is. And like, then somebody yeah. telling me who's a higher rank saying, oh, that's not important. Drill and uniform inspection are really important. I had a real big problem with it. Yeah. So, like I said, no no regrets. I miss the, the clown. I don't miss the circus. But, you know, I... I I was able to get out because I knew buddies who were staying in, and I was like, you know what, they've got it from here. I, they can do more good for the institution than I can staying in. Yeah, you know, the, the civilian world needs leadership too. Good for y'all, man. That's, uh, like you said, important having that support. So, and I really wanted to grow my beard out. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, yeah, uh, to help do that, throwing Finally, a little bit of our utility balm, making sure it gets a, a good coating throughout the entire beard, and uh, we can start to shape it a little bit. Just gonna sit up for a minute, now, brother. Yeah. yeah. We can see what it looks like when you're looking straight ahead. I got about a thumbnail's worth of product for a beard as thick as yours. I want a little 
heavy handed. Mm -hmm. There's plenty to coat. Uh, and now, like I said, we can just uh, shape it. How's that looking, Sly? Looks great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, you too, man. You're the one that's got to rock this later. It looks awesome. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's funny because when he had the full beard walking in, like, you don't want to you don't want to ruin that. You don't want to do that. And then you take it back to this. You're like, that's still a shit ton of beard. Yeah. But it looks thick and dense, and it's going to be good for the regrowth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already kept way past any of those any of those split ends that we looked at earlier. We've already gotten to a point where a lot of this hair has been loved on. It'll have a little bit of a chance to breathe. Tell me what you think about the experience. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's a little nerve-wracking, right, when you come to cut it off and we took a lot off too yeah like, uh, do you think more people should come to the beard green barbershop oh yeah 100 yeah 100%. guys with beards guys without beards guys, guys who want to grow beards <laughs> if you've got a shitty beard I you like want it. it to be a good beard i like it i like it all right man well thank you